One, two, one, two, you know how we do with your boy BQ. Welcome to another episode of the B-Side Podcast. Hope everyone had a good Christmas holiday or however you celebrate this time of the year. I'm actually speaking to you right now on Christmas. It's uh, it's noontime for me on Christmas, but um, my girlfriend is not get home from work till about 3.30 or so. So uh, the kids have to wait for Christmas um, until the afternoon, so... Uh, just me and, and me and them today, um, and fortunately I'm off today. I'm off every Wednesday, so that uh, worked really well for me. And uh, so I'm here, drop, you know, talking talking B side, talking Impact Wrestling with you guys. Haven't podcasted in a few weeks, and I've got a couple of really good topics that I want to talk about. Um, a quick reminder to you guys, if you don't you don't already know this, uh, I have a second channel coming out. It's the Impact Lounge Podcast Network. And if you're listening on YouTube right now, uh, if you're listening on the streaming format, you don't have anything to worry about. If you're listening on YouTube, in the pinned comment and the description of this video, you can subscribe to the channel. And the subscribers that I'm looking for are people like you, people who are listening to this podcast right now. So with the Impact Lounge channel, you know, with this one right here, obviously, you know, I have 5,400 subscribers. So the other channel right now is at like 70. So I'm trying to get it up to about 300, but I don't want the people who um, obviously doesn't apply to you because you're listening to me speak right now. I don't want the people who only subscribe for the top 10 lists or the news or the vlogs or the rumors or what, you know, all that shit on this new channel. I want strictly the people who listen to the podcasts and the interviews because the podcasts are going to be moving over to this channel in, in a few months waiting to build it up a little bit soon so please subscribe to that channel if you're listening to my voice right now and haven't subscribed i hope that you i hope to get 100% participation in this uh, so that you can continue to listen to the podcasts but it's going to be a, a few months away and there's going to be four different podcasts uh, sprinkled in throughout the month that's going to be on that channel. And, and again, it's just podcast interview listeners only. Um, just really going to separate the uh, the content because it's actually hurting the channel uh, because, you know, the, the types of contract uh, contract of types of content. It's a pretty wide spectrum what's on the Impact Lounge, and it's actually hurting the growth of the channel. I'm not going to bore you with YouTube analytics shit, but um, it is going to be separated in the two. So it's the Impact Lounge Podcast Network. Check the pinned comment and or the description of this video to make sure you get subscribed. Really, We really got to get that up to um, about 300 subscribers before I really start uploading on there. And I'm actually going to u- upload... I'm going to stream live after hard to kill from that channel with my review. So you guys will get the total nonstop impact one when they stream, but I'm going to do my own review on the new channel. So that's going to be a little bit of an experiment. So, uh, let's, let's, let's get away from that. Um, let's talk killer cross. He's finally been granted his release and you know, everyone's very indifferent on this because you know, I think as impact wrestling fans, we're very, protective of the company and when someone uh, even no matter how we like the person you know how much we like them once they start you know having problems with the company or saying this and this and we we kind of turn against the wrestler you know um we do we do that quite a bit and uh it, it's it's fair not fair i don't know i like cross he was very good to my kids when we met him so i don't have anything negative to say about the situation and we, everything is, is speculation. It's all hearsay. What's going on? I can tell you the only thing I can tell you with 100% certainty uh, from my context is that there's two sides to every story. And that's all you guys have to remember that, that there were, you know, impact acknowledges mistakes made on their end, but they weren't, you know, the only, the only side in this. So, you know, I, I think that's common sense for a lot of people, though. Any uh, that's any time you hear one person speak and then another person speak, the truth's always in the middle. I mean, that's a that's one of the facts in life. 
It's a it's held tried and true. So um, I'm I'm uh, I'm sad to see him go because I really thought he was a guy that was gonna you know be a huge star for the company. And I had said months back that to me personally, Roman Reigns, who's the you know the guy at WWE, to me he has nothing on Cross. To me, there's not one quality that he has that's better than what what Cross has. That that's in my opinion. And maybe you maybe you disagree, but even if you disagree, Cross for the majority of his characteristics and skills is better than what Roman Reigns is. So I mean, you're talking about a guy who really has the potential to be a star. I'm really hoping he doesn't go to the WWE because we we all know like the money's good or whatever. And for Scarlett Bordeaux, I'm sure the money was great to go to get an NXT paycheck, which you know, is a developmental deal, not necessarily not necessarily as high as, as a main the main roster money. So I think NXT works for her, but Cross, he needs a lot more control over his character than that. He's not going to be Killer Cross in, in NXT or WWE. He's not going to have that name, and everything that makes him who he is now, and everything that he's built up, he's not going to be able to carry that over if he goes there. So, you know, hopefully we just see him. Maybe I, I don't think he's just going to stick on the Indies. I don't think that at all. I think he's going to go prove his worth on a on a bigger stage. So I think uh, AEW is very possible to be a home for him, even though I know WWE is trying very hard to get him. They're throwing some some big money his way. Uh, the contract they said they were initially offering to Adam Page is what they're offering to Cross, apparently. So we'll see if Cross, you know, goes for the money, but. In interviews before, you know, Cross had said that he didn't feel like if he went to WWE, they would use him properly. You know, he's he said this much. This isn't just us, you know, with common sense as fans. You know, he, he said this much before. So hopefully he sticks to that and just goes somewhere to where he can continue to be who he is. But, but it's a loss for Impact. It is. And um, I don't know if Impact handled this the right way with his contract because you remember they try to make a example out of Matt and Jeff Hardy too and 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 we get that you know as a company you you can't just have someone come up and say hey I I want to be paid more or I'm gone like when when there's contracts involved I I think the rest many wrestlers disagree with that if if a company can fire you you should also be able to quit a company but it's it's different in the world of sports sport entertainment like you can't just you, you, there's a contract involved. You can't just walk away, and it's, it's you shouldn't be able to just walk away. But did Anthem and Impact did they handle this correctly? I don't know. You know, obviously they wanted to make an example out of him because usually when someone says I want to go, they just let him go. And at some point you have to put your foot down. But I don't think Impact is in a place to play hardball like that because. It's funny how many wrestling fans come out the woodworks who aren't really supporters of Impact to begin with, and all of a sudden they turn on. You know, they're 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 taking the side of Cross, even though they don't follow the the story. You know, I mean, any anything to to shit on Impact. And uh, but those same fans, if someone tried to shit on WWE, they would take WWE's side. You know, like because as fans, we just we just kind of take the the side of the company. So we'll see what's what happens. You know, most people expect that he's just going to join Scarlet Bordeaux and NXT. You know, I mean, what is she really doing over there? I don't think anything at the moment. I don't think that's a good home for him. I don't. And hopefully that's that's not what he does. But um, if you're listening on YouTube, let me know in the comments just what you think about the Killer Cross departure. I don't think he's someone who's just replaceable. I mean, the guy is a phenomenal promo, great character. And, you know, one of the debuts that they really, truly built, you know, now they just say, hey, so-and-so is going to show up. You know, they don't they don't build up any any new wrestlers. He just shows up one day. But this was this is one of the last ones that they really built up and really did a good cro- uh, good uh, job with him. But I think what hurt Cross a little bit was when they threw him in that, you know, world title scene with Moose and Johnny Impact and Cage and there are all these four man matches and you know, tag matches every single week. And it was just some version of the same match every single week. And um, I really felt they should have built him 
separately. I, I was okay with him with Moose, and I really think every time you put multiple people in the world title picture, it, it really hurts the wrestlers and hurts the title. Um, I guess we'll never really know the real story because, again, it's it's something in the middle, and Impact hasn't said a whole lot so far. But yeah, Cross is gone. It's finally happened. We'll see what happens for him next. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, if you're one of those people who have a hard time saving money, putting money aside, you know, I see it every time when Impact has a pay-per-view coming out or even when, you know, paying for Impact Plus, a lot of people really struggle to put money aside. Try checking out Acorns. The link is going to be in the description of this video and on the podcast, it's going to be in the show notes. But what I really like about Acorns is if I go make a, a purchase somewhere for $2.80, it's going to take that $0.20 cents and put it in a separate account for me. Or if I go somewhere and spend $1.10, it's going to take $0.90 cents and put it in that account for me. And at the end of the month, I've saved you know a certain amount of money without even really knowing. And... Also, I make my purchases through, you know, whether it's NBA.com or Walmart.com. When I order food through Postmates, Grubhub, you know, I get a percentage from those kicked back into this account. So every month I'm building this savings account and uh, it's a really cool thing. And if you check out my link, that's going to be in the description in the show notes. They're going to deposit five bucks in that account for you to get it started. But it's something you really should check out. So uh, check out Acorns. I uh, hope you love it like I love it. Next thing on the menu, I talk a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot about Impact's marketing. And I beat it to death. I, I know that I do. I, I talk about it a whole lot. But what, I wanna, what I'm trying to get across you guys, because I think a lot of people when they hear the word marketing, they're thinking of promotion, of promoting something. And they're actually two very, very different things. Impact actually does a pretty decent job of promoting things but the marketing side they don't so what's what's the difference the easiest way i can put it is promotion is the information you put out there and marketing is how you put that information out there does that when you put that information out there through promotion are you making people take action are you making making them elicit emotion do they want to you know we're talking about social media here do they want to click? Do they want to comment? You know, do they get excited about the information you put out? So the reason I'm talking about this for the umpteenth, umpteenth time is that on this episode, not this episode, but, you know, last week's episode of Impact, and I, and I saw a lot of people on Twitter were pissed about this, so I'm not just, you know, this isn't just me. They announced, Josh Matthews announced Moose versus, who's he fighting? Rhino. And RVD versus Cage, like it was nothing. He just he starts going over the card. Oh, you know, Ty Valkyrie's defending this and this, and then he just throws in there Moose versus Rhino and RVD versus Brian Cage, and and that's it. That's how we found out about the matches. So yeah, you're promoting the pay per view, but the marketing side is, is shit because what what have you done to make us care about the information you just gave us? If they come across on TV like they don't care then in turn, we won't care. There's a few people who care because they like the wrestlers. You, you know, Moose is my favorite guy in the company right now. I don't care about that fucking match versus Rhino. And then I have a little more interest in RVD versus Cage. But I, when you just put it out there, just, hey, you know, oh yeah, by the way, there's these two matches. Then why? what are we getting excited about with the pay-per-view? And that's that disconnect I'm always talking about Impact has with, with the people. They don't know how to make anything feel important, but it's the, it's the delivery. It's how they put the information out there. I'm going to give you an example of it being done right, okay? So, AEW is doing a show in Atlanta. That's the information they put out there. Doing a show in Atlanta, Georgia. Cody, if you're watching on YouTube, you're going to see this in front of you. He posts a picture of him talking to his dad on the steps of that arena. And then he posts a picture of him currently. Well, on an, some pictures you'll see an empty staircase and the one you see in front of you is like the ghost of Dusty Rhodes. Now you've made an emotional connection with the people after giving them that information. Now you have told them this is why it's important. This is why it means something. This is why going there fucking means something. So you can put out information all day. Hey, this is where we're going to be doing a show at. 
but it's just the sh- like who cares you know you have to make people care you have to find a way to make people care and you know while they do a pretty good job of on social media like posting match graphics over and over and you know the, yeah we know we know what the matches are but what have they done to make us care about the pay-per-view or, or it to feel big and last time i did the b-side podcast i commended them on the the build for the pay-per-view I'm retracting that a little bit. The build is not good, but the way they've put the mat, like they established the title matches early, that was good. And they have some storylines behind them too, for the most part. But then the second half of the card, they j- they just threw it together. You know, the non-title matches, you know, maybe at the exception of Eddie and Elgin, but but we that's a match we want to see, with, that we, we all know we want to see. But... They're build, they built this Moose and RVD match. I'm sorry, Moose and Rhino match off a backstage segment. You know, you can deliver this content on TV. I mean, this information on TV and say, due to what happened backstage, Rhino has put out a challenge or Moose has put out a challenge. You can put something behind it, some kind of context behind it, instead of just saying this is the match. And this is, I was telling someone this on Facebook yesterday. The funny thing is Moose is clearly doing like a gimmick where he's wrestling stars of TNA's past. You know, he's even challenged Monty Brown, but he's clearly fighting, doing programs with stars of the company's past, RVD, Shamrock, and now Rhino. But they have not put that over on television. They have not communicated that to us. It's clear that's what they're doing, but the the creative side of it is so bad that they're not letting us, they're not painting that picture for us. Like, Hey, this is what he's doing. Because when you paint that picture, you say, okay, cool. Moose is taking on another legend. And then it has you actually anticipating like, well, what's next and how is it going to, how's it going to end? Is it going to be like a legitimate fucking legend that comes back that gets a real pop from the people? So, uh, you know, the, the cage and RVD stuff, that's again built through backstage segments and uh i have a little more interest in that in that one and um oh the other match they put out there i'm sorry i actually have to go back here a little bit it wasn't the cage and rvd match we already knew that was coming i believe it was the fulton and shamrock match that's what they they just threw in there like oh by the way they have a match last time i was speaking to you guys here i thought they wrote shamrock off tv with that angle like i was be fumbled that they're bringing him back for another pay-per-view. I, I I was actually commending him like, wow, that's a great, great way to write him off his TV. He's awfully obviously back for a short-term deal. And uh, no, he's going to be at the pay-per-view. So now we got three matches with three guys well past their prime in RVD and Shamrock and Rhino. Now RVD and Cage should probably put on a decent match. Rhino and, and Moose. We know Moose is going to, you know, do a good job. I, I don't know what to expect from that one. Shamrock versus Fulton. I, I like Fulton too, but that match could be one of the worst pay-per-view matches Impact puts out under the new regime. I, I really, truly think so. I think it'll be the worst, like the bottom. Because I don't think they match up very well in the ring. I don't think anyone cares. I think a lot of people though are, are happy for Fulton for getting that pay per view match. I, I am, I'm I'm cool with that. I dig that, but the match isn't going to be good. There's no way in hell it's going to be good. It, Shamrock versus Moose wasn't good, so how is this one? And that were, that was the co main event or the uh, not the co main event, but the ah uh, oh, the match before the main event. It was this. It was actually the first match they announced for Bound for Glory. So that was one of their big. You know the big bouts, and it wasn't good at all. It was the worst match on the card. So obviously Shamrock and and Fulton's going to be horrible. He needs to. They have to write Shamrock out of the company with this match. Like they have to. I I, I just I would be flabbergasted if Shamrock won this match. I highly doubt it. I don't think Rhino will win either. I think RVD is going to win, but I don't think the uh, the other ones. All three old guys aren't going to lose though. That's not going to happen, but you know, again, I'm 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 always hammering this home, marketing, marketing, marketing. They have to put the information out there in a way that that matters. If you just rattle off matches and that's how you announce them, 
you know, you know, it's all in the delivery. I'm, I'm giving the, the Cody tweet as an example. Like you take some information no one really cares about and then you flip it with a simple tweet to where people now give a shit and it's now, you know, highly retweeted and, and everything. You, you can't just put out matches and, and expect people to care because NWA sold out their pay-per-view in three hours. Now, granted, they have 250, 300 people in there, but in three hours. The AEW pay-per-view coming up, I forgot what it's called. I mean, what they usually do, like 10 minutes or whatever to you know sell out their pay-per-views. Impact is still selling tickets for Hard to Kill, and those tickets have been on sale since uh, November, I believe. And it all makes sense. That's why they put the main event out early. That's why they gave us a spoiler, because... They had to rush, you know, rush the uh, the creative to book the matches because the next, you know, last night and then the night next week are best of matches or best of episodes. So you don't have those two episodes to build with. So it makes me think too, like, was this really a smart, is January a smart time to put out a pay-per-view? Uh, and at first when people weren't buying tickets, I was like, well, you know, it's the holidays, but these other companies sold their tickets fine. So... Hopefully, a miracle happens um, in the next couple of weeks. And I, and I think it's also bad marketing to announce when you've sold out the show because, I mean, that's awesome. Announce it like at the pay-per-view. Like you throw it in there. Oh, you know, coming from a sold out, da 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 Because when you got these other companies that are just selling out with no, no effort whatsoever, and then here you are a month and a half later announcing, oh, we've sold out, you know. It make it's it's some minor league shit. It's some minor league social media shit that makes you look horrible. And you know the issue is that they stretch everything so thin uh, backstage with the company. You know, people are wearing multiple hats, and I think they fixed a couple things. The in ring, you know, the in ring has been really good with Impact. They're not trying to sell us on you know Robbie E versus Grado or something like that. You know what I mean? They're they're giving us really legit matches. The creative is very good. In my opinion, the storylines, everyone, the, the real gem about impact that they don't get credit for is that every single person on the roster, they've been able to involve them in a storyline. Like no one's just floating, you know, in, back when we had like Marche rocket and like Braxton Sutter for a while. And these guys thought they were just there. They just show up and wrestle a match. Like they had nothing they didn't have anything for them, you know? So the company's in a better position as far as the actual product goes, but you have to you have to make people care. And that's what takes me to my next point. Watching this last episode of Impact, the they they were doing this new thing with the cameras. They obviously got this from AEW. Um where they they pan through the crowd throughout the show like to get to show reactions. But the problem with this was that they showed the same couple sections of people over and over. There was this one section, I think I, I counted them four times, and it was the same footage every time. It wasn't it wasn't like they just kept going back to that, you know, and they were doing it quick too, like quick takes, you know, to show the this group and the audience and then a minute later right back to it. And then the other thing about that was they weren't even cheering. They were just they were just sitting there. I'm like, who the fuck edited this show? And they did it a few times. I'm curious to see if this is a new thing they're gonna do. But if you're gonna do it, show people who look like they're, they're they give a shit. I mean, they had people sitting on their hands, and they were highlighting them. I'm like, you're gonna tell me out of everyone there, that's who you're gonna show us? And then I really did some thinking. I watch obviously NWA and AEW as well. The the fans at those shows have a blast. Like they're having fun. They're having a good time. There's a disconnect with with the Impact product and the fans. People keeps oh well you know they this they don't cheer in New York. They don't cheer in Vegas. They don't. How many c- cities are we gonna say that about? You know, there's a disconnect with with the product and the people in the arena. They're just there, like the people are just there watching a wrestling show. They're not, you know, I would say they're enjoying themselves, you know, they're they're entertained, but they're not having fun. Like when you watch the throwback throwdown, which me personally I thought was 
horrible. The fans there weren't having fun. The company had more fun making it by far than the people watching and the people in the audience. They they were not having a good time. Some people were. I mean, they were laughing when stuff was funny, but a lot of people were sitting on their hands there too. And I don't know that I know how to fix this. I'm not trying to, you know, usually I try to put information out there when I really truly feel feel like this is the solution. I don't know what the solution is for this. And I hope I get some feedback from a few people who have been going to Impact shows recently. Um, when I had been to Impact in the Impact Zone, I think I had been like four times. They didn't play the backstage segments on the on the uh, the big screen. The first show I ever went to, I remember specifically they did. Because I remember this segment where they were interviewing Eric Young and then Willow was in the background. He's like, hey, that's Willow. I remember hearing Eric Young say that, but it wasn't like dominating the arena where everyone can see what's going on. Like it was very faint. So uh, the episodes I'd seen after that, I don't recall them showing anything back, you know, the backstage stuff. If they did, it didn't have audio. So I'm curious if they do that now because in this lap, last episode of Impact, when Brian Cage came out to attack RVD, he came out to crickets. And I want to say, I truly believe that the fans in the arena had no clue why Brian Cage was out there. You guys remember the Grand Championship, right? Do you guys know that the fans in the arena didn't know what the rules are were of the match? They just showed up and they started doing qualifying matches, this tournament for the Grand Championship. And they're saying, you know, so-and-so, the judges say this and they give this round of this. The people there did had no clue what, what the fuck was going on? They knew it was for the grand championship, you know what I mean? But they didn't understand like these these rules. And the same with the world title series, you know, that was never explained. And for me in, in the arena, from my experience, you know, I would go watch a show on TV and be like, oh, that was a number one contenders match. Like when Trey won the number one contendership, I don't think they communicated that to the audience. I could be wrong, but it, maybe this is completely going over my head, but I don't recall the, the ring announcer ever saying like the following contest is a number one contendership, num- number one contenders match for the X Division Championship or or things like that, or for the tag team when when Swan and Mac won. I could be totally wrong on that. Maybe they do. I I don't ever hear it, but we also can't hear the fucking announcer because of the audio levels, and that's why the other companies. Not NWA doesn't, but, you know, WWE, AEW, Ring of Honor. Like, they show the fucking ring announcer so that he is connecting with the people in the arena and connecting with the audience. The ring announcers in Impact are outside of the ring. You don't even know who it is half the time. You know, they're just sitting in a chair somewhere doing it. And that's part of how you connect with an audience. And they're missing that. They, they, they just flat out are. It doesn't matter where they go. You know, unless it's Windsor or something like that, you know, you just see fans sitting on their fucking hands. The uh, the No Surrender show had a pretty good crowd. I'll say that the ones on the stage were just like sitting on their hands, but you, everyone else was were, were pretty pumped up. So that's a good crowd. Like they should be filming TV there. That New York venue is awful, and I don't even have an issue with Vegas. Some people have an issue with Vegas, but you know that that's really the. The conclusion I've come to that, that the fans just aren't having fun at Impact shows. And it, it it might be the format of the show because if you've ever been to a, a taping, they sometimes they show matches out of order. I mean, they show them in order on TV, but they record them out of order on, on screen. I mean, not on screen, but in the arena. And uh, the I've used this example many times. The first time I ever went to a show... Jesse Goddard, this is back when he was teamed up with Eli Drake. Eli Drake was taking on Grado in a contract on a pole match or some shit. And Jesse Goddard came to help Eli Drake. No shit, 15 minutes later, Goddard came out as a member of the Bromance. Now, I, I will say this. Jeremy Borash did say, hey, a new tag team is returning to the audience. The audience thought the Motor City Machine Guns were going to show up. No shit. The people around, they were expecting like a major return. And when it was the bromance, the, I mean, it stuck the life out of the, the place. 
but it was out of nowhere and they just saw Jesse Goddard's 15 min minutes ago as a heel. So I wonder if this is something they have fixed. I, I feel like people show up and just watch wrestling. It's like watching a house show. You're, you're just watching wrestling. So I really think the disconnect lies somewhere in there. But, you know, again, look at look at NWA, look at AW. Like the fans are having a blast through the whole thing. And that isn't happening with Impact. And we talk, we've been talking about this for years now. Oh, the Impact fans need to get more lively at the show. Sure, surely they got the memo that they need to do that. But they're not. And there's a reason for it. There, there is a fucking reason for it. And I, all I can do is make my best guess. I don't, I don't really know. Give me your thoughts in the comments on YouTube. But speaking of hard to kill, before we get into the rest of, of the show and, and talking about Impact, when the pay-per-view comes on, I know you guys order food. I know you order out. Maybe you order pizza. Maybe you have someone go pick something up. Have you tried DoorDash, though? I order from DoorDash all the time at work, and people constantly be like, oh, I didn't know McDonald's delivered, or I didn't know Taco Bell delivered. No, I, I order through DoorDash, and they deliver whatever restaurant they're partnered with in the area. Now, if you check my code out, again, this is in the description and in the show notes. If you sign up for DoorDash with my code, they're going to give you $5 off your first three orders. So that's a pretty nice discount. You're basically not paying for a delivery fee. And when hard to kill comes on, you can, you can pretty much order anything. You don't have to, if you don't want to order pizza, Hut, maybe you want to order pizza, but if it's from another place, that doesn't deliver a local spot. You can do that through DoorDash. So click the link, your next three orders will have $5 off, but let's get into impact from last week. This was a pretty good show. I was pretty bored with the previous couple. And this New York venue, I just don't think is a good venue for them. I, I hope, I truly hope they stop. I'm sorry if I piss anyone off that is listening to this that goes to those shows, but it's just not a good venue. You know, the, the the crowd is not engaged. And I know I talk about it all the time, but we can't, you know, the audio is compressed and, and this and this, but you, you can see they're not engaged. And um, you can hear one or two people at a time trying to start a chant and it doesn't pick up or it doesn't catch on. You know, the ring, that small ring, like, it, it's just not a good venue for them. I hope that they they don't return there, but I'm sure I'm sure they will. Uh, I'm positive they will. Opening match was Jordan Grace versus Tennille Dashwood. This was Tennille Dashwood's best match by a long shot in Impact. She's still very underwhelming, but this was her best match by far. I still think they have to turn her heel. I think they have to pull the plug on, on the babyface thing. And uh, Jordan Grace wins. We well, you know they protect they protected Tennille with this with this victory. But Jordan Grace wins. It's a good match. The crowd is dead for it. I mean, fucking dead. And uh, it's 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 unfortunate because the match was actually okay. It was actually pretty good. I I did enjoy it. Got a little bit of time too. Had its sloppy moments, but what one thing that I'm not big on ever since Bound for Glory is how weak Ty is looking on TV. I mean, she's dropped two non-title matches. This has been a theme on Impact ever since Bound for Glory. Sammy Callahan got pinned. Ty has been pinned twice. And then um, Josh Alexander has lost. He lost to Marafuji. And you can even throw Ace Austin in there losing that tables match at No Surrender if you want to. But they're doing this thing that WWE had done for years, which I hated with passion, and it's just making the the champions lose non-title matches, and then that's how you decide who the number one contender is. I just I, I don't enjoy that style of booking at all. I fucking hate it. I actually I no shit thought that Tino was going to get added to the Knockouts Championship match after this because you you knock Ty on her ass, and the the crazy thing is. I think Ty is going to lose the title at the pay-per-view. We're probably not going to see ODB again. We saw her show one episode, and she's wrestling for the Knockouts Championship. She's been on NWA more than she's been on Impact. I don't think it, I think ODB is probably going to take the loss in the match, but I think Jordan Grace is actually going to win the championship. And I'm going to get into this when I preview the show. I'm going to preview the show a lot different this year. I'm going to give my 
my predictions, but I'm also going to rate the match as far as like how much I, and on a scale of one, one, two, three, how much I give a shit about the match or how much I think the, maybe not so much me, but what I think about the creative or the booking that put that match together. So I'm going to rate each match and then, you know, average it out. And then of course give my predictions, but you know, spoiler alert, I think Jordan Grace is going to leave with the knockouts championship. If this happens, if Jordan Grace wins, I think that means Ty is done with Impact Wrestling. I said this at Bound for Glory too, and I'm sticking by that. I think if she loses, we're not going to see her again. Kind of like with Johnny Impact. I don't think she's going to you know, rematch for the title, nothing like that. I, I, or maybe she'll show up in the next set of tapings, but I think she's done. She's had the title too long, and it's a historic title reign, but if she loses it, they're not, I just don't seem like keeping her around to try to get the title back. Like a bigger company. Yeah. But I think Ty is gone. I we'll see if that that's true or not. And I, you know, I have other similar predictions when I get to the hard to kill preview show and everything, but yeah, so she, she wins a match and then Moose and Rhino had a thing backstage and that's how they built the match. What, what else are we going to say about that? I, I think what Moose has been doing re- recently with the sports and the, the backstage stuff is like so good. But this match was just thrown together and um, we're supposed to care. The uh, the North with the Willie Mack stuff, I actually think Willie Mack will turn on Rich Swan at the pay-per-view. I kind of dig the story. I didn't like Rich Swan defying the odds because I didn't think it was necessary because he was already you know, on a roll. I didn't think they had to do all that. So I, I'm kind of indifferent on how this storyline's going, but I still have interest in it because I, I like all the wrestlers and I think it's going to be a good match. But I, I do think he's going to turn on him. TJP versus Daga. This match here, I actually thought was going to be real like high-flying and Huracan all this bullshit. I haven't enjoyed a match like this on Impact in, in a little while. When I say enjoy, though, not like, oh, this was such a good match, and I was just so I was just so engaged into this match. Like, the submission maneuvers Daga was doing, too, but what TJP was doing with the submissions, we don't see that kind of wrestling anymore. I've only seen Zack Zaber Jr. actually wrestle, like, once or twice, and I remember he I actually liked his style of wrestling where he just, like, slowly, methodically kept putting all these submission holds on people, and... um when I used to watch WWE, that's how they had who Daniel Bryan was at first. He he would make up all these submissions, and then it got to the point he only had one submission. But I haven't seen this style of wrestling in a while, and less and less people tap out these days. We're far removed from Bret Hart putting on the sharpshooter and someone tapping out immediately. Now everyone is, you know, trying to get to the ropes and the fakest submission move ever is a cross arm breaker. I used to teach a combatives class in the uh, Air Force. If that move is done properly, you will tap instantly. Instantly. It fucking hurts. Like you the minute you your your hand you won't even know you tapped. That's how instant it'll be. But um I digress. I really like this side of TJP and hopefully we just see more of T- TJP but this like this submission shit I can dig it and they're playing into where Bellator wants them to, you know, fight for them and everything. They played into that. Daga doesn't get many victories for Impact, but I think he's going to have a big 2020. I was pretty sure TJP was going to win this match. He, he needed the win, to be honest. Daga didn't really need it. Neither guy is going to be on the pay-per-view card. And it, Impact's been doing that lately where we just get all these matches of... They've been doing this for a while, actually, where the people in the pay-per-view don't even wrestle. So, I mean... I don't know. I guess I'd rather that get than rather that happen than them wrestling each other before the pay per view. But after this match, you know, the Desi Hit Squad comes out because follow Boz out there, and this this whole this whole thing happens. I think I thought that this was going to be a match at the freaking pay per view. We were going to get this was before they said we're getting Shamrock and Fulton. I thought we were going to get Rohit and Shira. Versus follow Bond TJP. I mean, that's a better match, right? We would care more about that. I assume that's, I, I was 100% sure they were going with that. 
and uh and we didn't get it so um that was whatever um the rvd thing that was cool but like i said cage came down to crickets the people don't know what they're fighting the brawl was real bad uh that little brawl <laughs> was not good uh but i don't think the people knew what was going on i, I really don't not a clue in hell Ethan Page versus versus Rich Swan. This was a good episode for action. Like the matches itself was was actually they were all really good, and um, you know they kind of went the safe way where Ethan Page, you know, won by disqualification, but he got Rich Swan to get himself disqualified. And they're doing the mind games angle, and you know they're putting some thought into this. They're putting some creative into it. And a lot of the times with other companies, tag team title matches or pay-per-views, they're just matches. You know what I mean? You're not building up any kind of creative, any kind of storyline to them, but impact impacts doing it. And this was the match I wanted at bound for glory. So it should be quite excellent. I just have a feeling it could be overbooked, but, uh, we will see Joey Ryan versus AC Romero. This match didn't do much for me. AC doesn't do much for me right now. I think um, Impact is signing guys that are talented, but there's there's a difference between guys who who excel in the indies and some guy and and guys who are built for television. You know, you you're taking a guy right off the indies and putting him on TV. You know, I think that there's I think he has some work to do in his presentation, but I'm impressed with him as a as an athlete, as a competitor. Not saying I dislike him at all, but it's not totally doing some anything for me right now. Joey Ryan, he's a comedy character, but he needed this win. He's he's got to get a win every once in a while, otherwise we're not going to care. And this was the punishment for the uh, the wrestlers' core thing. That segment was excellent. I I had to laugh on Twitter. I saw someone say that if that was done on AEW, people would be openly masturbating in public <laughs> over it. And they're so true. I mean, it's so true. They're so right. But, you know, but Joey Ryan got the win here. It just, it just didn't do much for me. I don't know what you can do with AC's character. You know, how do you incorporate that into any kind of story? And then you got Larry D coming on, which I, I like him, but at the same time, is he someone who's just kind of made for the indie scene or can he translate over that's yet to be seen because we haven't seen him compete on TV, but it, it worries me that they're just kind of signing guys just to sign them. And then no real direction. I brought up Marche rocket earlier. I was saying, you know, they brought him in no direction. Uh, Caleb Conley for a long time had no direction. Braxton, Braxton Sutter had no direction. MJ Jenkins, no direction. You know, they're just bringing people in just, just to sign people. You know what I mean? He saw some versus PD Williams. This was the, the main event of this. What worries me with this being the main event probably tells me that it was the, 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 um, you know, cause they record two episodes a day that this was halfway through the first day or the second day. I think it was halfway through the, f no, yeah, it was halfway through the second day because the, the second half of tapings of that show we're going to get right before the pay-per-view. And if the crowd was this dead for the first half, you know, this, they, they may, it may really take the cake, this, uh, this final go home episode. And again, if the people don't care in the crowd, if Josh Matthews doesn't care when he announced matches, why do, why we care to buy a ticket or, or to buy a pay-per-view? I'm saying we, I'm just talking about the wrestling community. You know what? Where's the excitement for it? You're, you're trying to put all your eggs in the Tessa versus Sammy basket. And that would have worked if you didn't oversaturate the feud for the last six months. But anyway, Ace Austin versus Petey Williams was pretty good. I think Ace, Ace Austin is going to be a real breakout star in 2020. Some people don't like the gimmick. I love it. I think it's hilarious. And, um, Usually we see Petey Williams only wrestle in Canada, so you know here what here he was in in New York wrestling. But I uh, I enjoy that match. You know it's the main event of the show, but he is you know Petey is or not Petey, but Ace is the X Division champion, so I guess he can close out a show. Why not? But overall, the match with the the, the the episode was good. At the end, I guess it wasn't the main event because they this closing segment was how they sent the the show home 
Sammy comes out. I'm watching this segment with my girlfriend. She's bored the whole show. Yeah. And I say that because she's, you know, I said this last podcast, she doesn't really watch wrestling, but she watches it with me. But to me, she represents like a casual fan and she only comes alive when Susie comes on the screen and maybe when Tessa Blanchard does. But other than that, she's, she's usually pretty bored watching. But again, she kind of came alive for this. It was Sammy versus not Sammy, but Sammy talking in the ring about Tessa. He goes, I'm exposed Tessa Blanchard. He says the same exact shit that he's been saying since Slammiversary. The same shit. The same shit. And even even my girl was like, that's it? You know, like she was waiting for that. Like, oh, he's, he's an exposer. Like he, she was, as, as again, as a casual viewer, she's, what's, what's he going to say? And even she was like, he's, he's said that before. You know, he said it at the... Uh, the hard to kill press conference that they did the same shit. So they were building this angle through social media. And I was like, wow, what a disappointment. But then the brawl happens. And this was well freaking done. And they have a, they have a hit. They have a consistent history of really booking the main event paper at the pay-per-views really well. I'm stumbling all over myself today. I'm sorry. They've been doing a really good job with that. And this this brawl was great. I thought the fans out there, I thought it was kind of hokey and, and cheesy and it came off kind of fake. You know, the people out there, clearly they were fans, but just the, oh, and oh, uh, like, I thought, I just didn't think that sounded realistic. But when they were going to the traffic and all that, like that, that was realistic. They came off realistic to me. Tessa's selling was amazing. Um, I don't know who's going to win this match yet. I know everyone's like, well, Tessa's obviously going to win. When I get when I preview the show, I'll get a little little deeper into that, into what I think could potentially happen. And I'm not trying to overbook or anything, but I, I think there's two sides of the coin to this, how this is going to end. But the feud was really, really well done. You know, it has over a million views on social media and everything all across the board. So, you know, that they nailed it with this. And I'm proud of them because they're not posting it over and fucking over on social media like they... They did with like throwback throwdown, and every time someone you know they do something else a little bit good, they just beat it to death. Like I thought that they, you know, had some restraint this time around, and did exactly what I have I have said: let people create the buzz, let people say, let the people say this was good, this was amazing, and let people share it. Don't tell people it was good because then you're you're over promising. So they did exactly this time around what I had been saying to do. Just let it let it breathe let it let it bubble let the people talk about it and um with with aside from the aside from the crowd reactions and all that you know the the brawl was really good and those two are probably going to rip each other's heads off at the pay-per-view thanks for listening to the b-side i will catch you guys later win a little bit over this week but thank you so much for listening i will talk to you soon peace